Hello and welcome to this presentation by ETH Zurich. Let's start uh, talking about our project, this project where uh, we moved our scratch file system basically from a hard disk drive technology to a flash technology. So let's see our agenda for today where we will speak about the file systems that we have at ETH Zurich and then a little bit just an overview of uh, flash storage and our, the challenges uh, we had to face when we integrated this new uh, flash storage file system into our environment. So this is where we are at ETH Zurich. This is the main building of our university. So this is the file system that we currently have. We operate in two sites, two different sites. Uh, in the first site, um, we have a multi-tenancy cluster that we have already presented in other uh, lab editions. Um, in at Lugano, in the CSCS facilities, uh, we have Euler, which is a bigger cluster, which is a multi-purpose cluster, uh, where we have two file systems, one main capacity file system based entirely on HDDs and Alastair 212, and then the file system we'll speak about today, scratch file system entirely based on flash technologies. This is the look of uh, basically the hardware we installed. Uh, it is a DDN uh, system, an ES400, which has four VMs, and I think it's a kind of a standard these days, where we have these 240 uh, terabytes, um, four NTs, eight OSTs, um, so nothing special. It's just nice to have uh, this configuration in just a two U unit. Um, it's something always impressive to see. Let's discuss what are the advantages of flash storage but very briefly, because I don't think at this point anyone needs to uh, get introduced to this technology. Uh, basically, it gives a lot more reliability, which is interesting when compared to mechanical uh, drives. Uh, the four factor is interesting, and we have seen um, in terms of the bandwidth and IOPS that it can provide for uh, such a, a, a small form factor. Um, well, obviously, what I just had said, the bandwidth, uh, it is quite interesting, and the IOPS. The IOPS is definitely, for us, the killing argument especially when we are speaking about the scratch file system. And there are, of course, also some caveats that everybody knows. The capacity, obviously, flash uh, devices are usually smaller than uh, HDDs. So these days we have uh, uh, flash devices that can be as large or even larger than any HDDs, but this comes at a cost. Um, we have also a couple of things that uh, are right amplification and we're leveling that these are problems that are inherent to the technology and basically what we want today is discuss we will discuss this these two uh, specific caveats and problems and how we had to handle how these these problems that uh, the flash technology uh, introduces uh, how these problems affect uh, laser and how it affected our uh, specific uh, configuration first of all i would like to give you some context and to basically make you understand uh, what kind of file system or scratch up file system we have. We have a scratch uh, file system where we have a soft quote of two terabytes per, per user and a grace period of seven days uh, from this uh, period in Luster uh, after seven days being above the soft quota, the soft quota becomes a hard quota. Then our rules of the scratch are, well, this is a scratch, this is supposed to be uh, scratch data, of course. So we uh, reserve ourselves the right to purge files with an access time about 15 days uh, which means that at any given time the users uh, can see their data removed if they did not access this data um, more than 15 days ago so let's discuss now about the evolution of our scratch file system which i don't think is much different from what other people or other sites are doing uh, we, with the with scratch, what we need are basically IOPS and bandwidth uh, because this needs to be very f jobs that are uh, trying to write very fast, checkpointing, um, any, you name it, the kind of, of workload that a scratch file system uses to have. It's a little bit of everything, but it's mainly checkpointing. Um, why not some users are using it as well to, to load some data from, from, from the capacity file system. In any case, uh, the requirements are quite clear. IOPS and bandwidth. Uh, for this bandwidth and for these IOPS, we basically needed uh, a lot of hard drives to reach the performance, uh, which in our conditions like with the previous rules we presented, that means that we had a lot of capacity available. Because
because users need to be uh, limited to this uh, two terabyte uh, quota limit, which at the end um, made a lot of, of Anil's capacity, uh, which was quite uh, quite odd, if I can say so. So when we had to discuss uh, our next scratch file system, we basically look at Flash like the natural solution for this, um, because it would obviously with the capacity should not be a problem, and the man with an IOPS uh, were going to be there. We get on, 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 on our scratch file system, our evolution on the first month. Um, with our previous scratch, we were basically saying, we just purge scratch for next time because I remind you that we had we were just using 20% of the capacity of the scratch file system, which gave us at the end a lot of room to do these purges, uh, looking for files that were not accessed for more than 15 uh, days. Um, so yeah, from time to time, we, we were going to clean up, but this was not a hard requirement, right? Uh, and then for IOPS and, and bandwidth and periods of high load, we would simply say, okay, let's simply uh, move ahead and, um, and cross fingers. Um, so we installed our flash and the conclusion of our first month was the system is down please fix it as soon as possible. That was exactly four weeks after the system went in production, which was quite of a uh, situation, right? Uh, so let's see why our scratch uh, was down and our performance was basically terrible. When we were checking the right performance on a single task process, we had three to 100 megabit per second. Of course, the reference of these OSTs was around 10 gigabit per second. Uh, in multi multitask, but in any case, that single task should be capable to perfectly do uh, one gigabit per second, if uh, not more. So yeah, that was uh, that made the, the, the file system unusable for for write, which in case of the scratch, as, as we previously discussed uh, with checkpointing and uh, this kind of, of workloads, it is critical. And what we were saying is, the devices were obviously not. Uh, super loaded because of this this performance does not seem that well for flash uh, there was low i weight and the load in general on the on the on the on the devices was not high but it was a very high uh, system time uh, so we were checking and we were seeing that, that the system was the servers were basically uh, spinning like crazy with the cpus and last but not least an important tell the purges were not automatically triggered yet because it had been working so far well in manual mode and after a month we still were at 80 percent capacity on the on the scratch file system i mean we had 20 percent free capacity but at the time um we thought well basically this 20 percent remaining uh, could trigger a lot of ldisk uh operations right uh, trying to uh, find new blocks to, to allocate the new data, but since this is a uh, flash, it should be very fast on a flash device. As a consequence of all of this, uh, the system was virtually down because uh, obviously a single uh, task writing to scratch and doing three megabytes per second or even 100 megabytes per second uh, does not seem like an acceptable performance for, for our users and we can understand that. What happened is simply something that it has been already discussed on other LAD editions, which is a problem with LDISC FS uh, block allocator. Um, so Johan Perar, our uh, support expert from DDN, actually gave us the, the right hint after lots of looking uh, here and there and trying to find the, the solution or the source of the problem. He said, why don't you just try to uh, tune the threshold for the block allocator and see what does it, uh, what does it make to the system? So usually this is set, this C3 level threshold is set to five, which means that uh, it will kick in when um, we have only 5% of the file system available for, for new data. Um, so we tune with this ridiculous value, uh, which is 40, which was going to obviously trigger this algorithm, this uh, uh, algorithm for allocation of new LDISC FS blocks immediately. This algorithm, what it makes, it says, don't try to look the perfect fit for the right I'm trying to do. 
please give me uh, available LDSKFS blocks as soon as possible. Give me whatever you have. Um, I don't care about fragmentation. Obviously, this, this recover uh, most of the performance almost uh, immediately. This problem about the LDSKFS block allocator and um, the, the algorithms that define the block allocator uh, were already discussed by Artem Blagodarenko in, in LAT 2019. The title might be misleading because it says age file system. And in our case, we can say, okay, this file system was just one month old. So it was not an age file system, but at the end, the effect is the same, which is uh, intensive block allocation and uh, a file system that it is uh, pretty full. And at the end, uh, we can say that the defaults were simply not good for us. But above all, uh, the main lesson we learn is we have to manage our scratch in a very, very thoughtful way. Uh, so we needed to just put in place the automatic uh, purges of a scratch so we could keep always our file system uh, at a lower capacity, right? 80% does not seem a super healthy value in terms of capacity. Um, since we have this automatic uh, purges of a scratch, our file system is basically at 50, usually at 50% capacity or always going from 40 to 60% capacity, which seems a reasonable uh, value and with flash uh, devices is perfectly good. Once we had this, this LDSK FS tuning, once we had these automatic purges in place, uh, then what? Well, uh, the system is responsive, we can have reasonable good performance for a single task. As I said, one gigabyte per second for a single task is okay, but it's not yet there because if we check the performance of the system, then we discover that our write performance was still like almost a quarter of the performance that we used to have when we benchmarked the system. The problem is that there is not, there were, there was not such a high load on the system. So this was not justified by load especially in a flash system where uh, it is support, supposed to be capable to do a lot of IOPS. Um, and the read performance was there, so it was all about write. Let's see what happened here. Well, uh, for this low write performance, the, the, let's think about what our scratch file system is doing or what are actually our users doing on our scratch file system. Some users, because they want to get advantage of this flash file system, but they are limited by their quota, um, they, would, they would have quite a good discipline uh, moving their data and removing data that they don't need and moving between file systems, which at the end creates a lot of, obviously, removals. And last but not least, uh, the automatic purge policy uh, is obviously also contributing to this because if users don't manage well their uh, data, their data is going to be erased, which makes that they automatically improve their 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 workflow in terms of data with the scratch. Last but not least, we are indeed removing the data that has not been accessed for more than 15 days, which, for instance, if I look at the last 30 days, I can see that we removed 161 terabytes, which represents roughly a 66% uh, or two thirds of the capacity of the file system. That is a lot of turnover in these devices. That is a lot of, of, of LDISC FS blocks that have been uh, removed from the, from, the, from the file system or the data actually has been, uh, the, the data blocks has been marked as free. So all of these creates a perfect right amplification scenario. I, don't think I will have the time to explain in this presentation uh, write amplification, and I think there's extensive documentation about this uh, on the web. Um, but let's see what are the consequences for Luster uh, in this scenario. At the end, it comes all about trimming. Uh, we have not, we are not discovering something super new here. This was already covered in one of the last talks on the, the, the effect. Uh, trimming has on, on the flash devices or on the laser file systems more specifically. Uh, for instance, Switch Ihara from DDN or Gael Del Barri from CEA already covered uh, this aspect on, also on LAT 2019. Um, but once again, we, we, we have to discover it by, by ourselves. And we see the right performance before, during, and after FS stream. 
uh, it is obvious that this is the, the, the factor that it is making uh, uh, our system to have one quarter uh, of the right performance that it is supposed to have. We also measure uh, the bandwidth, for instance, during, um, during trimming. And in terms of bandwidth, uh, if we measure with IOR, very big IOs, and which don't generate a lot of IOs, uh, it obviously doesn't have any influence, which is quite good, which means that if we simply want to keep our bandwidth, we, we can run FStream at any time of the day. The other option, instead of running FStream, which could be the, uh, the synchronous or kind of manual call that uh, we issue on the devices, uh, could be to mount the devices with the discard option, which could mean that for each removal of uh, files of the file system, uh, there would be the trimming would be automatically done for that specific um, file. All in all, what we see is that uh, if you are installing a flash cluster file system, uh, you need to decide whether you will run FStream or you will mount your devices with discard, because not trimming your file system, I guess it might be an option, but only in case you you are using your devices for 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 reads, because if as long as soon as you are trying to do a lot of of, of writes or as as long as there's a lot of turnover on your file system, mm, the write amplification effect will kick in. It's uh, unavoidable. Um. Well, on a case of extra scratch file system, no trimming, as we have seen, is just throwing away lots of IOPS. Um, so we have decided to implement our FStream on a cron job, a cron job which the frequency depends a lot. Uh, right now, we are doing this three to four times a day. Uh, we used to do, have this once per day, but the once per day we see is not enough. And then, because it does not affect performance that much, um, why not running it more, more often? And since we are running four times per day, we see that the right performance is is very stable, or at least the probes that we are uh, we have in place are 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 giving us uh, uni uniform performance, homogeneous performance. This could be changed in the future. Um, we are wondering now if it would be actually useful to simply forget FStream and go with a, a discard mount. Right now, we don't think. This could be this would be the way because we are comfortable with uh, the FSTM solution, but um, yeah, it's also um, an option, and I would be of course very interested in knowing um, what's the experience for those that are mounting their flash devices with the discard in case they are. Some final points about this presentation. Um, I hope this can give some hints to uh, Luster admins when they are installing a Scratch uh, or when they are installing any flash file system in the future. Um, so take special care of LDISC FS tuning because especially the LDISC FS block allocator might not be properly configured for your configuration or the kind of luster usage you have. And be very strict with data management because in this case, data removal matters a lot. The capacity of available on your file system also matters a lot, uh, which it has been always the case with Luster, right? But in this case, because the file system capacity is much lower than typically with uh, HDDs, um, we are more prone to have uh, capacity problems with Luster file systems. And then it doesn't make uh, a lot of sense to have a flash system without trimming um, in most of the cases, or at least that was our experience. There are also some other open questions such as what we just discussed, um, differences between uh, running uh, the manual trimming with FStream or mounting uh, the synchronous call with the discard mount option on the flash devices. Um, I think that's an interesting conversation to have. I would be interested to hear from you. What do you think about, about uh, this, the difference between these options uh, if you have actually uh, tested them? Another interesting topic could be uh, to speak about the word labeling on express file system. Um, well, how much does it affect to the, to, the, to, the, to the lifetime available for the flash devices? So far, and after six months of uh, intensive scratch usage, we see that our flash devices report 99% uh, of life remaining on their smart, inter, uh, smart interfaces. So 
looks quite okay, looks quite correct. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thanks a lot for listening. And if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer them. Thanks very much.